I start with one of the most widespread applications of such components, such devices, Shack Hartman sensors. And the objective, the goal of these sensors, of these devices, is to measure the wavefront of the incoming beam. Of course, in simulation, that's one of the good things about simulations, that we can actually look at the phase of a field in a simulation directly. We have that information, we have the field information. Um, but in reality, we always need indirect measurement techniques in order to be able to see or to somehow measure the phase of, of an electromagnetic field, the, the phase of the light. And one of those uh, contraptions, one of the ways in which we can perform that measurement is using a Shack Hartman sensor. Um, a sketch of the system would be this one. We impinge with a certain beam, in this case it's collimated, and each part of this, of, of this beam is going to interact with one pair, ideally, of microlenses, and is going to be focused. So here, if we imagine this setup, this sketch functioning, each situation here is more or less equivalent if we ignore potential uh, diffraction effects from the sides of the initial beam. Everything is the same. We have uh, an on-axis plane wave which encounters the lens and is focused onto the um, onto the final target plane. Then we're going to have a replication of exactly the same result. All the points are going to be equivalent. However, when uh, the situation changes and the beam has a spherical wavefront, things are going to change and each part, it can be, the, the, the whole situation can be thought of as if each microlens pair is going to see a slightly um, a part of the field that is going to have a different inclination by virtue of that um, spherical curvature of the wavefront. And so, depending on which microlens pair we're looking at, the corresponding focal spot uh, will be more or less, uh, will deviate more or less from its central position, depending on the inclination, the curvature of the beam, uh, or rather the, the gradient of the wavefront at that position, rather than the curvature, the gradient. And finally, in this last example, we're going to simply look at the light propagating behind a microlens array at different positions, so directly behind the microlenses, then at the focal plane, and further on when the parts of the beam into which, the parts of the light into which uh, the microlens has split the original beam, the original wave, um, because of the because of the divergence of each of them, they overlap in space and generate additional patterns in the resulting light. So because we have fully coherent light here, so we, um, we're going to be able to look at that pattern, that pattern that comes from the different beams corresponding to each of the microlenses interfering in the far field. Uh, when those all those beams overlap together. So that's what we're going to look at here, light propagating and uh, behind the microlens, and we're going to look at what that light looks like at different stages behind the microlens array. So first we have here the field directly behind that microlens array. And um, we see that gridded pattern of all the modes. Then if we propagate a little bit, the apertures of each of the microlenses um, are going to create a certain diffraction effect, which can be observed. And I take this chance to mention another new feature, uh, which is the modeling levels. If you have played with Virtual Lab Fusion before with the previous versions, you will have uh, surely encountered the different Fourier transforms that we offer. And a new uh, feature, a new situation that we bring with version 2021.1 20, 
are these modeling levels, which provide default configurations of those Fourier transforms to make handling easier for those users who are not intimately familiar with the intricacies of all those Fourier transform algorithms. So it simplifies, it provides a bit of a roadmap, a bit of a, of a, of a guided tour, if you will, of how to progress through the simulation. And so with these modeling levels, we can switch off diffraction, as we can see on the right hand side of this slide, or we can switch it on at different parts of the system. I will not go into depth. Again, I will, uh, I encourage you to look up the documentation about the release, uh, about the version, but we can switch diffraction on. And that's what we have on the left here of, of those two results. So we can see um, what the diffraction caused by the aperture of each of those micro lenses looks like, and we can switch off that diffraction if it were not of interest. Then we progress to the next stage, what the focal plane looks like, and um, we can see that spot, that spot here only the central mode, or we can see all of them together. And then we can move on to the part where um, all the parts of the initial beam which have been split by the micro lens array, where they all overlap and generate that additional pattern, that additional spot pattern. Um, in this case, it's the interference caused by each of those parts of the beam that causes the spots. Uh, initially, in the previous result, it was the focusing of each of, uh, of the single micro lenses at the focal plane of that micro lens array. Uh, and in this, at this situation in the far field where all the uh, parts overlap, we can look at each of the individual uh, results for a single micro lens, or we can combine all of them together. Again, we're talking about coherent light, so they interfere and generate that um, spot pattern, which we can also zoom in and look at in a more detailed form. And perhaps the most revolutionary feature in this field of micro lens arrays is the channel handling, which we're going to look at now in virtual app fusion itself. So we have the setup here that corresponds to that experiment we have just seen on the slides. And I have gone to the channel configuration panel. And we previously we already had channel handling in virtual app fusion. For instance, what we call now master channels here in the micro lens array component um, exist already and have existed for a while for all surfaces, all components. And this allows us to control in a non-sequential simulation um, the four different types of interaction that light can have with a surface. It can be transmitted through from the left, it can be reflected when it comes from the left, or it can be transmitted through from the right, or it can be reflected when it comes from the right. So this is what we control here at this first tab of master channels. But the new aspect, the new control, the new channel handling notion that is included with this new micro lens array component is the sub-channels in the X domain. And we have full control, we can select, uh, currently we have two options, we can select none or structure related. Structure related means one channel, one sub-channel in the X domain will be taken per micro lens. And the option none will still have some internal channel handling, but according to the wavefront of the field. And both options have their uses. For instance, the um, the in the shot in the Shack Hartman example, uh, we used the option none. But when the edges of the different micro lenses are important, when resolving that with or handling that with care is important, then it makes sense to use the structure related. Um, X domain channel decomposition. So this is also what allows us to look at the individualized results. We can observe what the light looks like just for one micro lens and we can select which one um, we want to look at, we want to analyze. We would do that 
here under channel mode management and we can look at all channel modes or just a single one. So there are a lot of capabilities that are uh, provided that are suddenly facilitated by these new features and in this context particularly by this micro lens array component and the new concept of channel handling.